Hey guys, how's it going? It is your boy, Manga Man Drew, and I'm just here to do my manga discussion for My Hero Academia, manga chapter 371. Pretty much what I'm going to be doing in this video is just talking a little bit more about Shoji as well as Koda and bring up some things that are different between the official and unofficial translations. So let's just start off by going over the differences between the official and unofficial translations. And for the most part, there are some differences that actually can change the perspective of how you view the characters, specifically how you view the character of Shoji in this chapter. But the first change is a very minor one and it comes from Spinner at the beginning of the chapter, how he goes from no idea in the unofficial translation to don't care or don't care in the official. And that when it comes to also the response of the Mantis guy and how he reacts to what Spinner has said also being different. And overall, the differences between the translations for this part of the chapter are not that big. The only difference that is lost is the assumption in the unofficial translation about how the idea that people won't understand the plight of the heteromorphs is not there, but is replaced with the idea that history is written in blood and that what they are doing is unavoidable. One tackles the idea that people won't understand them, while the other one is saying that this is just an inevitability that people will get hurt. And I think when it comes to this translation, the official translation just fits better because they are doing something which is invading a hospital that just doesn't make any sense but the explanation that blood will eventually be shed will give the people more justification for doing what they would most likely assume to be something horrible that they shouldn't do. So there is that change but there is also a change when it comes to Spinner's abilities and what he can actually do. In the unofficial translation he has said that he has a quirk called durability but in actuality it's called body bulk which makes sense because his body is bulky it is bigger so it makes sense that that is the quirk instead of just durability which does not have an inherent size adaptation or size change but then the next one is just literally just a name change between the scale like armor which in the official translation is called scale mail while in the unofficial translation it's called scale armor and what they exactly do is pretty much the same, so that's just a minor change of the actual name. But where there are some substantial changes in the chapter actually derives from Shoji's backstory and Koda's flashback about Shoji's backstory. And one change just comes from the first things that Shoji really says in this flashback. And when it comes to how Shoji's kind of incident occurred, it seems to be a lot more cruel in the official translation than in the unofficial. Because in the unofficial, they are just talking about how they are willing to just hurt children because they have quirks that are not very much human-like. But in the official translation, they really call what they're about to do to Shoji a blood cleansing, and it's just because he touched someone. And that, that is a little bit more on the oof than in the unofficial translation. But another change comes from the idea of the characters of Koda, Tokoyami, and the others growing up in the city. And how in the unofficial translation, he brings up this idea that those students may have thought that discrimination was behind them, but in reality it's not. But in the official translation, what they're alluding to is that they would actually know about it in the textbooks, but not actually know about the extent that would be happening because they live in the cities. Also, in actuality, in the unofficial translation, it actually can be a little bit more violent because of what Shoji says about how people in the country wouldn't bat an eye about murdering children. And actuality, yeah, it's a little bit more crueler in the unofficial translation, especially when it comes to how Mina is responding to what they did to Shoji and how in the official translation, she says how the world will be better without those people, while in the unofficial translation, she's talking about murdering them, which in reality, yeah, no, that's kind of what they're doing right now, but that's not a good thing to say. So yeah, it's a lot more cruel in the unofficial translation. But then we also get another minor change in the chapter, and it's pretty much comes after the realization that Mineta has about calling Shoji an octopus. And how in the unofficial translation, you just have Shoji being a little bit more nonchalant or laissez-faire about it, and how Shoji understands that, which is why he calls himself Tentacle and how he enjoys watching the most villain looking heroes ranking and how he says that he's not bothered by it at all. But in the official translation, there is a very different connotation and how he does explain that his name does derive from the fact that he is an octopus, 
But then you also have Shoji bringing up the idea that he's aware of the bride spread heroes who look like villains ranking and stuff like that, and that he wouldn't want people to tiptoe around the issue for his sake. Now, what this is implying is more that when it comes to the idea of heroes who look like villains, that most likely than not, that is kind of like a pseudo discriminatory way of viewing heroes because most likely than not, those heroes that look like villains would have heteromorphic quirks, very much like Gang Orca. And how from the official translation, you have Shoji who may not necessarily be a fan of it, but he's not going to be the one to sort of want people to tiptoe around the issue, which basically means he doesn't want to be someone who wants to hide away from the fact that this stuff is actually happening and would prefer for it to be more open for people. Not necessarily that it's something that isn't bothering him or something that he enjoys. Which is kind of similar to something that Spinner has said about the people using the term heteromorph and how it's tiptoeing around the issue, but yet Shoji uses the word heteromorph himself in a way incorporating the word that is supposed to put him down, but using it more casually so it doesn't have really any meaning to it. And pretty much from there, everything else about the flashback is still relatively the same, like how he wears the mask so that he doesn't give people the wrong impression that he's out for revenge, as well as the fact that he looks upon the memories that he loved having his quirk instead of dwelling on what has made him mad, also seeing how the students pretty much react the same between the official and unofficial translations when it tries to comfort Shoji and want to make more memories for him. So yeah, that's pretty much all of the stuff that is the same and also something that I forgot to mention is that Froppy actually goes into a specific set of Shoji's arms and says that this is the most comfortable spot because this is something that she would know because she as well as Minenta was actually inside of Shoji during the sports festival during the cavalry battle, so that's something that she would know and it's just a fun, cool callback. And speaking of callbacks, let's talk about Koda for a little bit because Koda was probably one of the characters that I just wanted to get more of at the beginning of this series when I was first getting into it, mainly because he has an ability to talk and communicate with animals. And as someone who loves animals, I would have loved that quirk. However, from the beginning of the story, Koda hasn't really done much in the story proper. And of the characters in Class 1A, he hasn't had the most character development, but he definitely has had character development. But what is probably more important is the character growth that he has gone through, and that's what has made me more attached to Koda as a character. Because we've seen his growth throughout the story, even if it isn't explicitly stated that he has changed, by the fact that over the course of the story, every time we focus on Koda in one way or another, he seems to talk more and more, communicate more with his classmates as time goes on. And this is very great because this ties into his development about how he couldn't really talk to the insects because he was scared of them and how he really didn't talk that much because of just his personality and how he's more reserved and how he's very quiet. Similar to what Deku was, but to a greater extent. But as we see throughout the story, he begins to connect more with the friends that he has made along the way and show how much he cares about them, he begins to be more active and begins to speak a lot more. As we see that he defends Jiro or tries to support Jiro for her singing and developing and taking control of the cultural festival, he was the character that actually advocated for Jiro to take place and do what she wanted to do and use the music to help people. And this was amazing when I first saw it because he is a character that just doesn't speak, but the fact that he was willing to speak up in that moment shows growth. And we see that growth more during joint training when he's able to use insects with very little to no fear at all. And that this seemed to have had its peak when Koda, the person that was quiet throughout the entire story, was the first student to actually speak up and try to convince Deku to come back to UA. So we've seen how much Koda has grown by breaking out of that shy persona, but we see that he's breaking out even more in this chapter by potentially seeing his quirk beginning to awaken. Because in this chapter, we see that the horn on his head is beginning to crack and break open. And as that is happening, we see a whole bunch of birds flocking around the Paranormal Liberation Front Lieutenant speaking the words that Spinner can't. And I think this is going to be tied to his Quirk Awakening because when it comes to Quirk Awakenings, they normally happen in times of high stress and high emotional fragility. 
and that when it comes to quirk awakenings that they are derived from emotions being a catalyst causing the individual's quirk to eventually evolve. And from what we see in this chapter, yeah, I think that he's going through a quirk awakening and that his quirk is going to evolve. Now, how is it going to evolve? I'm not sure. It may evolve to him being able to control multiple animals at once, or it may have something to do with his actual physical body. And that maybe he's able to take upon the attributes of the animals that he's controlling and incorporate them into his body. Maybe that's the reason why his horn is beginning to crack open because he's creating himself a new shell or a new body that may be able to withstand the transformation. Or maybe he's just gonna have a huge weapon on his head. We just don't know because this is not something that we have concrete evidence on when it comes to how a character's quirk will evolve. Or something else is that this could just be a secondary power that is just tied to his body because even though Coda does not have a quirk that is technically a heteromorphic quirk, he is still considered a heteromorph due to the fact that his appearance is most likely affected by the fact that quirks exist in the world. So this could just be a secondary byproduct of the fact that he is a character that may not have a heteromorphic quirk, but has that in his genetics to be a heteromorph, that this may be an evolution or an adaptation of his own physical body that may be beneficial in this fight because it is reacting to the emotions of seeing Shoji being put down by the individual speaking poorly of him. So there are many ways we can perceive what's going on with Koda in this chapter, but we're just going to have to wait and see what's going on with Koda, his new ability potentially, and his powers and his character moving forward in the story within the next chapter. So yeah, there wasn't really that much I really wanted to talk about this chapter. I just really wanted to talk a little bit more about Koda as well as Shoji and just give my thoughts on why I'm really enjoying this chapter, which is that they're getting a lot more focus and that these are just characters that I've enjoyed and liked from the very beginning of this series. But yeah, that's all I really have to say. Hopefully you enjoyed this chapter discussion. Hopefully you enjoyed the chapter. And if you did, why not leave a comment down below, leave a like on the video, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this. Do all that cool jazz, and hopefully I'll be able to catch you in my next video. Goodbye!